How you doing? I'm Brent from listsliders-and-docks.com. We're in Schoolcraft, Michigan, which is just south of Kalamazoo, uh, right next to Portage. We got a max lift here for one of our customers. Um, we're going to show you how you can adjust the campy with just a couple people, make some basic adjustments based on the first installation and setup for your new boat um, when you get a new lift. Uh, a lot of people get confused by this process, and a lot of people charge a lot to do it for you. Um, and they still might not do it right. So we're going to show you how to do it with just a couple buddies. And if you can, you know, just do it with basic power tools, a few buddies with the boat around, uh, it's really quite simple. So here, the way it's sitting in this location here, it's nice and sandy, so we don't have to worry about uh, sinking once the boat gets on for the most part. Um, sometimes they settle in. So if you use our boat lift crane to winch it up in the back, um, you can level it out yourself quite easily. Uh, right now we've got the canopy height above the water. It's pretty low, so the boat we don't think will fit. It depends on the boat. Uh, if you had a ski boat, it would be fine. But the main thing that we see, especially on lakes that flood a lot like this one, is that the installer will come, put it in with the canopy too low, just wherever it was hauled and transported at that height. And then the boat either can't make it all the way out of the water all the way uh, without smashing the windshield or you've got the cradle which is the part that moves up and down is sitting in the water and that's one of the worst things you can ever do to a boat lift is having a cradle in there because the pulleys are meant to turn on you know a rotational basis and when you've got a heavy boat on it and they're you know swishing around the waves all day it just blows out all the pulleys twists the cables uh, and really destroys it over time um, the other bad thing is if it does sink you really need to have it level all the way around so the best way to level it is if you have your cradle down like that we're right above the water right now so that's a perfect level uh, on a calm day so you can tell just how much each corner has to go and this brand specifically has several micro adjustments uh, in the lift frame as well as the leg tube itself so you can really fine tune it to almost perfect for some you can go to the next notch and you're suddenly too high uh, and then you can just dig out a little sand from the foot plate or from around the foot plate and get it kind of settled. But this one mainly before the boat can probably even get in, uh, just based on the height of this specific boat, the canopy's going to have to come up. Um, we're going to show you how to do that with just a couple people. You could have eight people on this, and if you're trying to raise the whole frame all at once, this is a very heavy canopy frame on this brand, which is good and bad. Um, but if you try to have eight people, you get a lot of binding, so it's hard as you can lift, it'll probably still get stuck. Really only takes two people. So on this particular one, we've got diagonal braces. This angle is gonna change when the canopy goes up. So we're gonna have to undo this here because we only have a cameraman, myself, we're not gonna actually do it right now. So this will come off, just swing down. They use an L bracket here to attach it. You can't really get in there and adjust that until this is out of the way because you can't get a socket on there. Sometimes you can get an open end wrench, but it's a pain. So that's just gonna swing down for now. The main trick is on this brand, we have our adjustment bolt here, and we've got our canopy mounting bolts in here under this track. So Max, this brand, they, they load all their uh, bolts in the track tube here. So you get a lot of friction and a lot of stickiness with the bolts, uh, which adds a lot of strength but it can make it a little tougher to adjust with the binding issue. So on this one, what we're actually gonna do is uh, remove these nuts up here, the two that are vertical holding the canopy top on. So if one person can be walking up here, once you have all the nuts removed around the perimeter, don't do this with the cover on because it can obviously fly away. Um, once that's gone, you just have two people. You get one person on here, you can have the boat present. Or without it, you just gotta be very careful tiptoeing, do it at your own risk. Uh, if you're not sure, you can hire somebody. So, uh, basically what I do then is just lift this corner. If you do one corner at a time, it's tedious, but it works and it's easy. So I'm just gonna lift this three or four inches while somebody else loosens this bolt down here, which actually uh, controls the upright. So the reason we do that is the way the head of this bolt is in this track tube, it's quite sticky, so if you try to pull the entire thing up, even if you have the manpower to do it, it just sticks and binds, and if you go too high in one corner, it'll get jam you know, really jammed in another. So when you loosen that, uh, to get the track tube to loosen up, you can just jiggle it with the head of the nut on there once it's loose. So if you use your impact, your ratchet, 
jiggle that, whoever's controlling this height, while they kind of jiggle it with their other hand. And you're gonna bring this upright to the canopy frame that your buddy has lifted up for you. So if you just come up a few inches at a time, you know, maybe front and back at the same time, if you have four people, uh, or one side or another, you can inch it up quite easily. So uh, it's actually a lot worse if you try to do the whole thing all at once. So just two people to do that. We're gonna show you on this back one here. Um, we've got the two nuts up top. Since this one doesn't have the diagonal brace, we'll mess with this one. So again, uh, this canopy is very heavy. That's one of the best parts about this brand, except for when you have to adjust it or move it, then you're lifting the extra weight, but it's the best brand for, uh, you know, storm uh, strength, and especially with the deep frame and the extra heavy, longer cover, catches a lot of wind. So it's good to have all that beef. Um, so this one I just detached, if you can zoom in there, where we've got the little L brackets. So we're just taking off the vertical one. And you see how that bolt is in the end of that uh, slot there, same here. It's so you can get an impact on there or a, a, a socket. Whereas if you had it in there, you'd be crooked. So we always leave that down. This one you could bring up if you wanted. You can usually get it in there, but uh, that's why they give you that little bit of adjustment there. So we're gonna pay attention. Uh, you know, sometimes you can mark it to make sure you fall in the same exact spot. If you've got some little marks on this one, um, just to make sure we stay lined up uh, once it goes up and down a few times because it could wiggle a little bit, but it's perfectly centered right there. So this one, so we're just gonna get out here. I'm just gonna lift it by myself. Somebody else is gonna take that adjustment bolt and jiggle the bolt in the upright, and they're gonna bring it up to me. So you're just gonna do a little bit of time, make sure that those bolts fall back into the track system there. So as you can see, depending on your pressure on it, it can wiggle a little bit and fall outside it. So you just wanna watch that, line it up, keep your fingers out of there. And then once you're happy with the new height that you're at, uh, you can tighten it all back down. So um, again, you can just work your way around, do a couple inches each corner. It'll lift up even easier if I had the whole thing undone, because right now I'm kind of fighting it with the twisting. Um, on this winch corner specifically on this brand, and some some others that have similar winches. Um, let me put this back down here. Show you here. You've got the winch box. This one has a Lorenz winch box on it. A lot of them have similar style plates here, but all our other corner tubes where they're measured to, uh, if you're measuring down the side for your new height, you know, we start usually at two and a half feet up on this four foot tall upright. If you're measuring from here down to here, it's gonna be different than your other three because your other three are actually measuring to the, the corner vertical tube there. So uh, that's one thing that some brands have that, some don't. Um, some of the other models from this brand have different brands of winches, so they might not have that as well. So again, you're gonna be down to the actual corner tube, which is the same on this one uh, down here. So that would be your adjustment bolt there and so then you want to make sure you're measuring from up in here somewhere straight down to there so you have the same measurement all the way around um so again on this one right now uh like i said with the cradle staying out of the water we're pretty low max put some arrows on here a lot of brands do that you can only crank up so high so this one can go up probably another six seven inches safely uh, to get a little safer height out of the water for waves and stuff so that the cradle's not getting bashed around. And again, that's so that the pulleys aren't getting smacked. Uh, if you leave that cradle down in the water, it gets all gummed up uh, in addition to the torture on the pulleys and the cables. So just like you see now, it's getting hit by waves. Uh, not even that big a wave, so it probably does need to come up a little bit. Um, you know, once it was cranked all the way up to the max or just shy of the max, you know, you never want to go past there. I like to stop a little bit lower, especially when you have a motor so that somebody, if they're not paying attention, uh, isn't going to start ripping things apart because that motor has enough strength to keep going. Um, so if we had it cranked up to where it could go, it would probably be okay. Uh, but it could also use some leg adjustment if you want more height 
especially if your lake floods a lot so you don't get a surprise when you're gone if you're an out-of-towner um, so again on this one we've got our diagonal braces up here um, once we have the canopy at a new height this angle of this brace is going to change it's going to be more vertical if we go higher so then you would just move this little L bracket loosen that once this is out of the way slide it down to the new spot as you can see this canopy frame rail is very flat right now very level where you have the connector here just with the the uh, weight of this canopy and the overhang off the bow it'll flex a little bit up in the middle there so when you go to reattach this you're going to uh, have one person put some upward pressure on this rail to get it to flatten out in the center and you're going to mock up where this brace is going to fall and then you probably want to put a little bit further upward pressure on it so it's actually going to be flexing up uh, before you tighten it so you're just mocking it up with a little upward flex and then once you actually tighten it down and release it it should fall you know pretty much flush and level like this so uh, just kind of depends uh, sometimes it doesn't fall as far as you thought and you might have a little bit of upward curve and just have to replace it again um, last thing on max is they do this tensioner system uh, it runs the canopy out a little bit so it lets you put the canopy on very nice and easy it goes on fairly loose uh, and then it lets you stretch it back out so you get a, a cleaner look and it's also better for the wind at that point so on this one we've got our tensioners in the front uh, because this canopy actually has an open end frame on the rear for a zippered rear cover for extra clearance uh, with the extended valence so we're gonna have that there because there's the framework down here in the front that's why we put the tensioners on the front otherwise if it was closed in usually we put it on the back so you can get to it from the swim deck but when you do run this out put a three-quarter inch uh, socket on your drill some impacts can't quite do it but you're going to just run it out a couple inches a little bit at a time one side and the other so maybe an inch here go to the other side an inch um, once you're happy with the extra tension on the canopy you're going to just tighten this jam nut back down and it keeps it from unthreading uh, over the course of the summer so that stretches the bottom of the canopy but before you do any of that there's this little connector bit up here so that's stretching the bottom, but there's nothing pushing on the top. So when I run that out with the cover on it, uh, once it's tight in the bottom, I loosen these two bolts here. Sometimes you have to do the long bolt there. That one helps grab the little uh, nub of the strip that can poke up sometimes, depending on how, how it's adjusted. Loosen those, and then you push it with one hand right there at the top of the cover get it to stretch out a little bit there because when you do these adjusters at the bottom there's nothing actually pushing in the peak so now you're going to push in the peak once you got that stretched out a little bit you tighten it with your other hand and then you can relieve your pressure so uh that's uh most of it with the canopy the bunks the first time you get a boat in there narrower is safer uh, you can always start inside and high and make sure you walk the boat in. Make sure that you're not dragging the keel on the frame of the lift. Um, and do that on a very calm day. Be extremely careful so you don't crush your hand with the boat. But you can make sure you're not actually dragging. Um, last thing, uh, and that can take a couple times up and down. You can kind of look at your trailer bunks before you start. But some trailers have a different angle of the cradle. So the height and position of the bunks might be kind of a false reading on your trailer uh, unless it has a very similar angle on it. Um, the last thing that I talk about is this one. We have a solar motor on it. Um, don't have a solar kit yet. We always mock that up after the fact. Uh, when you get it in here, you can wire up just one battery on the dock just to get it up and out of the water until your boat's ready. Really, you want to wait until you get the boat here to find the position of where that tray is going to go. This one particularly is going to have an 18 inch valence. So it's going to come down to probably about here. Once we raise the canopy another eight or 10 inches, it'll have more space right there. And because we have vertical guide poles, sometimes we would try to put the battery tray on the inside of the frame here. But as you can see on this one with the 
battery tray, the pole would obviously hit it when it's coming up. So this one's gonna have to get mounted on the outside. Every single boat's gonna be different. If it's in the rear of the a V hull boat, sometimes you don't have the room, but you have enough cord to come to the front uh, on most of them. So sometimes if you have a really sharp V nose, you might have the space on the inside if you don't have the guide pole. A lot of times on a pontoon, it just has to go on the outside because the pontoons are a perfect rectangle. Uh, so they would interfere potentially. So when you first crank that boat up, we just use hose clamps on it to make sure that tray is mocked up, make sure the boat's not gonna hit it wherever you place it after you made all your, your height adjustments. Um, and we just use the hose clamps to mock it up. And then after that, use some self-tapping screws to, to finish it off. So if it's gonna mount up here, you can test it all out first. So um, the other part is the solar panel. Uh, you want it facing south and sometimes you can maybe if you put the battery tray on the inside you might be able to get the arm for the solar panel on the outside sticking up and over and facing to the south just depends most solar panels have enough wire to go straight across or straight down this near edge so just depends but you got to be facing south typically uh at least for us in the northern hemisphere here to get the best sun all day every single boat's different and you want to probably do the solar panel after the cover is on because again it's going to be hanging down and you don't want your cover bunching up in the inside arm uh, of the solar panel so you got to have it low enough that this the skirt or the valence of the cover is not dragging on it or hanging on it which would chafe it over time and make it look all bunched up and goofy but then you also need to make sure it's sitting a safe height above the canopy so that if the cover parachutes a little bit it's not going to tear itself on the solar panel so that's the basic setup here again with the solar panel and the battery tray it all depends on your boat and how you do it if we didn't have these vertical guides this one we'd have plenty of space with the boat just because of the height of the canopy to put the battery tray inside uh, but with the guides we just can't so that's the basics of it the first time setup a lot of installers charge a lot of money for that and still might not take the proper time to do it. It can take a couple hours the first time or sometimes it's pretty set uh, right off the bat, but almost always takes a, a couple adjustments and it's a little bit tedious and it's a nice day out here now, but sometimes it's snowing when you're doing it. It's not very fun until you get a new boat. Uh, you should be all set with it. So that's the basics. Again, this is lifts, ladders, and docks. Uh, Appreciate you watching. Pretty much everything that you're gonna have on most lifts is either gonna be half inch, nine sixteenths, or three quarter. So everyone's got that kind of stuff. With the right knowledge and a couple buddies, you can pretty much do anything you need. So um, this, again, it's our max lift. This is a 6,000 pound model, 28 foot canopy with the super deep frame. Really great coverage all around. Got the open end frame on the back so you get lots of clearance, especially on the lakes that flood a lot. Uh, there's even pontoons on some lakes where they get two or three feet of flooding and they get a nasty surprise if they've been gone for a couple weeks. Either the boat's stuck inside or it's stuck out. So that helps get clearance. Normally that was kind of a wake boat thing with the tower clearance, but now it could be an everything kind of deal. Um, you don't know until you know, but if your lake floods, uh, it's a bad feeling when you get stuck out of it because you put a frame there. So that's an easy way to do it. And with the zippered end cover, you get full coverage still. Uh, without sacrificing any um, coverage when you're gone. So again, lift sliders and docks just south of Kalamazoo, Michigan. Thanks for watching.